Hey, welcome back for another episode of Corn Brain Rewire, the podcast uh, with me, Dr. Trish Lee. Today, I have our lead coach, Zach Carter, with me today because we are going to kick off No Corn November. Hi, Zach. How's it going? Hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah, well, thanks for joining me because this was important to me because last night, this is a true story. Last night, I said to my husband, we should do No Drink November, have no cocktails in November. Mm -hmm. And we, he wasn't going to have any drinks last night. And this is literally a true story. He goes, okay. And then I said, we're not telling anybody because normally he's a proclaimer. He tells everybody all of our business. Okay. So of course I'm telling everybody here on the And podcast. now you're telling everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Not my friends yeah. who won't be listening because normally he's like, you know, making a big deal out of it. So anyways, the minute I say, let's do no drink November, I see this twinkle in his eye. And I go, dude, that is not licensed to be on a bender until Halloween. <laughs> and I could see the twinkle. And then he proceeds to pour the largest glass of red wine that literally should be lethal. <laughs> so anyways, what I, he was fine. He, he only sipped on a Cabernet made by one of our best friends, Michelle. She right. makes a wine called Pentimento. So anyways. Right. But it did get my, you know, mind thinking about we're moving into mm. no porn November, which this is a time of year when people mm. who have been wrapped up in porn really do think to themselves, you know what, I'm going to give 30 days a shot, I'm going to get the momentum built. Mm -hmm. And you know, I said to him, let's just hibernate in November, let's like, let's just chill and relax and recover, because it's been a busy, stressful, you know, summer. So that was my intention of like regrouping and you know, bringing it all back in so that we can expand again. So that's why I want people to know, you know, we're moving into no porn November. It is not licensed to just go off the rails before and after. What it is, is a time to commit to yourself, to recovering the best authentic version of yourself. And so we are going to commit to helping you in bigger and better ways. And that's why we're here. So mm -hmm. What we're going to do for November is I offer a program called No Porn November Challenge. It's a daily challenge program. Uh, we run it for $33. So that it's a dollar a day if you want to join. It will be the same program as last year. So if you did it last year, just stay with me on YouTube for the new fresh videos and stay here with the podcast. If you've not done it, it's a really cool program that I got a lot of really good feedback for. So we're running that program and we're also running a coaching special with Zach. So that's why I wanted to highlight, and I don't know what he's going to say. So hopefully he's going to say some really inspiring coaching strategies here. <laughs> so inspired. <laughs> no, no pressure there, Zach, but I don't know what he's going to say, but obviously. How, I how much him. profanity can I use? Um... Actually, they use unlimited <laughs> on, on streaming services, right? Have you heard, okay. uh, have you heard okay. Joe Rogan or? Any other <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. That's good to know. Unlimited All right, cool. profanity. We just have to check the box, <laughs> but you know, I am really excited. So if you decide you want coaching through these 30 days or after Zach is here for you. So he's going to inspire us today. And if you sign up for coaching with Zach, you get the No Porn November program included for free. So it's complimentary because we really do want to help you. The whole goal of this podcast and my whole mission is, is seriously to help you, you personally, so that you can come out of the screen, change your sexual behaviors, and double down on creating the life that you want to create. So without further ado, inspire us, Zach. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. Well, and I, I, I got into it, uh, you know, I got into this in the same way. This is my dream job. Like I do this job because I wish that there had been someone like me that could walk me through, just tell me what to do. Like I was, I was like, I, I just want to quit this. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And, um, if that's you, like, that's, that's what I'm here for. Like I'm here to, to walk you through it. So Dr. Definitely. Lee and I and, talk and most people need that level of support. So sorry mm -hmm. to cut you off, but like, you know, if you're out there and you're like, I've been listening to this podcast and I've gotten 40% of the way, 70% of the way, but I can't get all the way there. It's mm -hmm. not because you can't, it's mm -hmm. because you need more support. So, right. you know, I want every person out there to know you can do this. It is challenging for most mm -hmm. people, but mm -hmm. you know, we can help you through. Right. And the stuff we talk about is, is stuff that I do. Like if we talk about, 
groups or we talk about mentors or we talk about coaches and we talk about all it's like I do these things as well. Like, and I've seen the benefit, which is why I wanted to do it. So, um, well, so Dr. Lee reached out to me and was like, how about we do the topic, what it takes to succeed for November. And so I thought about it and I've got four points. And so I can just get started with that. If yeah, you awesome. You Let's dig in. Yep. Yep. Cool. Point number so one. Lay it on mentor- me and, then, and then I'll share some comments if that's okay. So we'll go back and forth. Sure. Yeah. So um, my mentor always said the phrase, the first thing you need to, know to overcome the stuff is that you have to do whatever it takes. And it's the truth, man. It's oftentimes it's the things that you don't want to give up that you need to give up in order to overcome this, right? There've been numerous apps on my phone that I've said, oh, I can't make it without this app. And it kept being a problem for me. And then I had to get rid of it. And what do you know? I was fine. Like life went on and I got better sobriety, you know, game systems, technology. I can't get rid of this. I need this. I got rid of it. I was fine. Right. I had to do what it took. Right. Um, my, the, one of the main phrases I tell my clients is, are you making sobriety easy on yourself or are you making it harder on yourself? Okay. This applies to defensive strategies and offensive. So I just talked about the technology is having this technology around making sobriety easier or harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you may say, "Oh, I think I can I can make it with access to YouTube on my phone." Mm-hmm. Maybe, but is it making is it making it harder for you to stay away from videos you shouldn't watch or is it making it easier? Um and then includes yep. with um uh offensive strategies. I have a client that he and I we we were like, "Okay, what when, when are you having problems? And he was like, okay, I'm, I'm having problems Saturday nights. That's when I'm relapsing regularly. I was like, okay. And I asked him the miracle question. So this is a very famous counseling question. If you had your ideal Saturday, what would it look like? And he's like, you know, I would go to the movies with my buddies and go out to eat after. And so what do you know? He bought an AMC pass. We Mm -hmm. said, okay, twice a month, your goal is to go to the movies with your buddies and go out to eat. Such a hard goal, right? (laughs) And all of a sudden, what do you know? Saturday nights is no longer a problem for him. Why? Because he made sobriety easier on himself and in a fun way. Totally. And and just to capitalize on the neuroscience of it, because you know how I love to do that, is that, you know, that's going transitioning from high levels of dopamine in isolation with a super normal stimulus of porn and masturbation to what's called the happiness trifecta of healthy levels of dopamine for pleasure, serotonin for happiness and oxytocin for connection. Mm -hmm. And that shift is essential. And finding the places in your schedule, in your life where there's holes, where you are dopamine seeking instead of achieving the happiness trifecta is really important. Mm -hmm. And you're Mm -hmm. totally right. Why make it difficult when you can just make it easier by, you know, kind of looking that gift horse in the mouth mouth and saying like, you know, I can, I can do without this for a time. Mm -hmm. Because one more thing I want people to know is when you decide to commit to no porn November, if you watch porn yesterday, your brain has to unwire, rewire and hardwire into the optimal pattern. When it does that, it's not going to be as difficult as it is on day one of the no porn November challenge, but you Mm -hmm. have to give your brain the opportunity to do that. So when you give those things up for today, it doesn't mean you have to give them up for forever. It means you have to give them up until your brain rewires. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, it literally changes your brain, all the things that you're talking about, which is why Mm -hmm. we use these strategies in coaching. Right. Right. Well, so that's, that's number one, do whatever it takes, make it easier on yourself. Um, Number two, um, harness guilt. Don't let it grow into shame. Right. So what, you know, there's, there's a condition in the DSM five, what psychologists use to, to, um, uh, tell people, this is the condition that you have, right. Um, Mm -hmm. diagnose was the word I was looking for. They Mm diagnose the conditions with the DSM five. There's a condition in there called the general called generalized anxiety disorder. You don't want that, right. That's anxiety has grown and it just infects every part of your life. However, is anxiety a bad thing? No. Anxiety is designed so that if you were in the wilderness and a tiger jumped out in front of you, it's like you either need to flee or you need to fight right now, right? So anxiety isn't inherently bad. 
and you Sorry, can drop my phone. <laughs> that oh, was you're the fine. Noise. I, I dropped my phone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So anxiety isn't inherently bad. You can harness anxiety to get stuff done. That's why a lot of times when we procrastinate, anxiety builds and that's suddenly, okay, I got to get this thing done, right? You can harness guilt to say, okay, I need, I need to fix these things in my life and change. But as Dr. Lee has talked about, there's a difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is, okay, I did a bad thing. How do I change? Shame is I'm a bad person. I can't change, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments? Yeah, I do. And I actually, this is one of the things I wanted to talk about for success is Mm -hmm. that I wanted people to recognize that when you go into porn, you are escaping into high levels of dopamine as a stress response. So what you're talking about, so stressors happen in the world. And we know the number one reason for porn consumption is stress. The number two reason is boredom. And I would contend boredom's not even boredom. It's lack of overstimulation. And we can talk about that in a minute. But the stress response that you've taught yourself is I get stressed or bored. I go into the screen to get lots of dopamine. That is a, it's a flight into isolation. So it's actually kind of flight into freeze. Mm -hmm. But you can recondition yourself to go, okay, I've got some hard stuff here. So let's do this hard stuff, stuff, approach and engage, Mm -hmm. approach and engage. That is the solution. But if you miss the mark on that and your stress response was strong and you went into flight into escapism, then you can extend yourself grace and Mm -hmm. be able to say, okay, I didn't want to give into that stress response, but I did. But I'm going to add a caveat to this to not let you off as easily as Zach is letting you off (laughs) is that to use that guilt properly, you have to learn it's win or learn because when you get, you know, when the cloud, the fog clears, you have to be able to say what happened there. Mm -hmm. How did I end up going back? That's Mm -hmm. how guilt really serves you. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I still do things that make me feel guilty. Lord knows I wish I was, you know, free from the human condition and I didn't feel guilt. But when I missed the mark on being the person that I want to be, and I wasn't, one thing I want to do is to have a loving response always. (laughs) So, so sometimes I don't do that. And when I don't do that, then I say to myself, why did that happen? Why did I miss the mark on that? Mm -hmm. And then I will go in and apologize to whomever I showed up less than loving to But then I'll also go, okay, what led me there? It's always busyness. It's always Mm -hmm. too many things on my plate because that's just my thing. So like when I learn from that, then I learn how to not react in that way, but I also learn how to change something. So Mm -hmm. guilt is supposed to allow you to change something so that next Mm -hmm. time you're better prepared. And people ask me this all the time about slips and relapses, early slips and relapses. If you're doing no porn November challenge for the first time ever, some early slips and relapses might happen because I get the question all the time. Do they have to happen? The answer is no, but they might. Mm -hmm. So if they do, you have to learn from them or how are you going to course correct and move in a new direction? Mm -hmm. That's the difference of guilt and shame. Shame takes you down. Shame's like, shame just spirals you and you can't do any Mm -hmm. of those things. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on that? And I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what I work with my clients on. It's like, okay, bro, there's, there's no judgment. It's all right. Why did it happen? What led to this? When did it happen? How can we change, right? And I walk through that with my clients, right? Um, and so also, you may be saying, you're like, okay, well, I, I want to engage with these tasks, but I just can't make myself do it. Well, I'm going to tease you a little here. I can help you with that in coaching. So <laughs> if you say, I have these big, big goals, these are I, alert. These things I, wanna, <laughs> I have these big things I want to do, right? Come do coaching because I will walk you through it and help you to be able to to engage in fight instead of flee into porn, right? The flee and freeze response. Totally. And it is amazing when you know, especially when you pay for it. Like, you know, let's let's not let's address the elephant in the room. You have to pay for coaching, but mm-hmm. it's a huge value. Like I I try to give people mo- more value than than what they pay for. That's a goal that I always do. So I believe in the value but you have to pay for it. But paying for it is part of why you get the value. Because I know when I pay for something, I will squeeze out of it what I can get. Mm -hmm. Because I have invested in myself 
through that coach. So I'm not investing in the coach. I'm investing in myself. That investment allows me to be accountable to somebody to make the changes in my life. It's like personal training. You want to lose weight and get fit, get a personal trainer. Because when you show back up next week and you haven't lost any weight, he's going to say to you, what are you doing? You haven't lost any weight, which means you haven't started eating healthier or working out. Like there should be results if you do the things your coach tells you. So when you invest in coaching, you get the results. It's how it goes. Mm -hmm. If you do the work. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move, let's move to point three. Um, So what it takes to succeed uh, point three, be patient, be patient with yourself. This goes back to the shame, you know, and, and some of the, the grace that you have on yourself. What I tell my clients is sobriety is a skill. I think we think that like, okay, you know, I'm taking Dr. Lee's 90 day program. Uh, She's talking about meditation and box breathing. I'm going to do that 30 minutes a day, every day, and I'm never going to miss a day. And then you miss a day and you're like, you know what? This is stupid. I don't don't want to do this anyways. Right. And Mm -hmm. I think the, the analogy I'd like to give is that, you know, it's kind of like saying, okay, I want to learn piano. And you sit down you put Mozart in front of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're probably going to quit piano pretty quickly if you're putting Mozart in front of yourself. <laughs> yeah. That's why you start with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So Definitely. with sobriety, you start with reasonable goals and you build over time, right? And so be patient mm-hmm. with yourself. It is a skill that you learn. Any yeah. any thoughts? I love it. I love it. And you know, that was actually one of my original thoughts that I was going to say at, back at point 1 is that, you know, that was kind of my point about, you know, day one of a journey is not the same as day 90 of a journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like, and I always use the example of, you know, if you start to traverse a new path, you know, you have to trample down the weeds, but, and then there might be rocks or actually my husband and I, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I think I probably talked about this on the podcast, but we went to grandfather mountain and Mm -hmm. we in North Carolina and we chose a hiking trail. It was insane. It was so difficult. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I was expecting it to be a dirt road. But it was literally like you had to you had to climb over giant boulders and things Mm -hmm. like that. And we weren't Mm -hmm. really dressed for it. But, you know, we're like, can we do this? And of Mm -hmm. course, like the first we got our feet wet in the river, then like, you know, I'm like sliding down a boulder. But then by the end of the trail, I felt so psyched with myself because I'm like Mm -hmm. climbing up this rope ladder and we're on this Mm -hmm. huge boulder overlooking Grandfather Mountain. If that was at the beginning of the trail, I would have been toast. I would have never even done it. I wouldn't have been able to like jump on that rock and use this rope ladder to get to the top. Mm -hmm. But because it was an hour later and I had course corrected along the way and I kind of got fear out of my system the first couple of times I stumbled, but I learned. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's exactly it. You have to have patience. And that's why I use the word grace because it's like, you know, okay, I'm learning here and you're totally right. It's skill building. I tell people that all the time when you take the 90 day program, And when you're in coaching, the goal is you learn new stuff and you start using it and you live a different life. And it's pretty amazing when you start doing this. I went to visit my family twice lately. I haven't seen my family of origin in two years. I've went to see them twice and I'm like, wow, I'm so different than all of them. How? I literally had these moments where I'm like, how am I like completely different? But the how is I've been doing this stuff for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And it's like in the moments and in the learning and in the never stopping to learn. That's the joke with recovery that when you get into a recovery program, you know, you've actually made like, you know, you've made stride in recovery when you never want to leave recovery Mm -hmm. because like, you know, you're on a journey of evolution and personal transformation and self-actualization. And it feels so good that it becomes a lifelong journey that you never want to stop. And, you know, that happened along the way for me. It's happening along the way for you. And hopefully it's happening along everybody else's journey here too. But that's why patience comes into account. It's rest in action. My son Declan always tells me that. That's his little coaching strategy for me. When I get a little overwhelmed, it's like, Mm -hmm. it's rest, it's action, and then rest, Ma. You know, action, rest, go rest. Because I'm always in action mode. He's like, go rest. So, you know, it's action and rest and patience along the journey. Mm, That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's finish this up with the last point and then we'll wrap it up. Um, So number four on what it takes to succeed is actually focusing on the things you want to accomplish. 
and not just the things you want to quit. I'm going to, I'm going to use the very cliched analogy that everyone uses. So forgive me, but (laughs) if I say, don't think about the purple elephant, everyone thinks about the purple elephant. Right. And so if each day you're like, okay, just don't look at porn. Just don't look, just don't, I'm not going to masturbate. I'm not going to do these things that can actually be part of um part of the problem when it's going to it's going to increase cortisol in your brain so it's going to increase your stress your brain's going to say hey I want some dopamine and where do I get dopamine I get dopamine from the thing I'm trying to avoid <laughs> right so it becomes part of the problem or you know you can focus like the client I talked about a minute ago what do I want to accomplish? I want to hang with friends. And I want to have a good time on a Saturday night. Okay. I'm going to go to the movies. I have another client who he was like, man, I got so many projects that I need to do in my house. And so we like detailed out the pro the projects he needed to, to do. And suddenly, what do you know? He has a month of sobriety. He's like, wow, that was easy. Right. Because he was focusing on the projects at his house that he wanted to finish mm-hmm. instead of how do I obtain sobriety? Mm-hmm. Any any yep. thoughts on your end? Totally. And actually I was moving the document so I could look at it because I am working on a new program today and I put together, this is a piece that's in the 90 day program, but it's the areas of your life that you can focus on for goals. And so I'm just going to read them because mm-hmm. I happen to have the document right here. Um, and if you're in the 90 day program, you know, we move you through it in an exercise, but intellectual goals, which of course I'm always working on emotional goals, physical goals. So working out, those types of things, emotional goals are, you know, I, I'm always working on emotional goals. How do I show up differently for my kiddos in, in responsive way? Spiritual goals, familial goals, social goals, financial vocation is work goals and avocation, which is your hobbies or things you like to do. And there are nine primary categories of, you know, figuring out what you want in each of those categories. And then when you work on them, you create the balanced life. Because if you're just work, if you're just focused on working out, you will max out on working out. And if you're just focused on finish, you know, fixing your finances, you, you know, it has to be spread across the nine to be a balanced life. And that's why I like those goals. And when you set sights on what you want, it helps you to not do things that sabotage you. So you're either moving towards your goals or away from them. So if you set financial goals and then you go spend some money on sexual acting out, you're moving further away, you know, and if you're giving yourself dopamine hits, you're moving further away spiritually or physically. So these goals become really important and they become like a guidepost, kind of like a um, a lighthouse for you. You know, you're kind of out at sea and you feel like you're drifting around or you're bobbling at sea and you don't know where you're going. And I like to do these goals and re- refresh them all the time so that I make sure I'm staying the course because my life changes. And, you know, my husband today, he goes, let's get reverse osmosis for the house, water, which we plan on getting. And he's like, let's just get it right now. I go, dude, I am in the middle of, you know, creating these financial goals. I'm not just going to whimsically get reverse osmosis. He's like, but it would be so much easier than using the Berkey. We have a Berkey water filter. I'm like, it would be easier, but I'm not just doing it until it fits into the formula of what I'm creating. You know, and he's staring at me, but I'm like, I got financial goals and just spending money when I feel like it isn't the way I'm going to achieve them. So then it, it, I can gauge, you know, what to do and what not to do. Really good guidepost when I know this is what I want. I want financial peace and spending money whenever I want. And then the kids will rip on me because they'll be like, why'd you get those sneakers? I'm like, well, they fit into the formula. They're they're super good looking. <laughs> Girls got to put something on our feet, right? <laughs> so, but it does become like, you know, then I know what, you, then you know what you want. Mm-hmm. It's really important. So I love it. I love it. That's great. Well, let me, I'll, I'll summarize the points one more time. And then that's all I've got for today. So what it takes to succeed. Number one is doing whatever it takes. Are you making sobriety easy on yourself or hard on yourself? Two. Harness guilt, right? Don't let it turn into shame. Uh, Three, be patient. Sobriety is a skill. And number four, focus on the things you want to accomplish, not just the things you want to quit. Yeah. And number five, get into a coaching program if you're not in one right now. And you know, you know how I am. This isn't the sales part. This is the, if you need support part, we are here for you. 
Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we don't want you bobbling around at sea by yourself. When you get an anchor, it is so much easier to succeed. And if you're not succeeding right now, do our not do our no no poor November challenge. Hibernate like I'm going to. Join me in some hibernation this November, getting ready to you know launch into the new year in a really healthy way and get support in doing it. It cannot be underestimated. I always think when it comes to purchasing, I think in return on investment. That's how my brain works. Like, and don't get me wrong, we will be getting reverse osmosis water because the return on investment is huge. So like the return on investment for coaching is you, we, you can shorten the length of time, mm -hmm. the amount of suffering, the feelings of that you will never be able to do it. You'll have camaraderie with, someone who's been on this journey and is ahead of you, you know, it's really the return on investment is huge. It's huge. If in your work, you're going to work better, your work will increase, mm -hmm. you know, you'll make more money. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. So like, if mm -hmm. you, if you need help, just think in return on investments because it's there for you. So, all right. right. Well, thanks for joining. And, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, And, and you, if you sign up during November, you're also going to get a program to keep, I have materials that Dr. Lee doesn't have. So you're going to get materials from um, my counseling studies. You're going to get some stuff from the 90 day program. I don't give too much away, uh, but it is part of it as well. So you get a little bit of that from the 90 day program as well. So you, you also get a bunch of things that you're going to keep. So it's not just, oh, I'm taking this coaching and then I don't have anything after I'm done. No, you're going to have a bunch of tools in your hands that you get to keep. So yeah, totally awesome. Investment. And I think at least from, you know, what I know of your coaching, I think the accountability and the way you help people measure their progress. Mm -hmm. I know that people really, really respect that and mm -hmm. appreciate and want to keep showing up for it. That is a huge thing that helps them to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. That's not mm -hmm. a thing somebody can do for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, in the new program I'm putting together, I keep thinking about the unconscious, subconscious and conscious factors at play. And those are the things I'm always trying to help people with. But when it comes to making change, you can, if you're doing it yourself, you can only do it with what you know. When you work with a coach, the coach pulls all that subconscious stuff out of you and makes, makes it conscious for you to work with, which mm -hmm. is literally a thing you cannot do yourself. Mm -hmm. And so like in the 90 day program, I walk you along so that you can do those things in a digital, you know, self-paced way and coaching with Zach, he literally will pull it out of you and serve it back to you consciously for you to work on. Like that cannot be underestimated. It's not, you can't go do it by yourself. You need a coach to do it with you. So, you know, that really is the importance of it. All right. Well, thanks for joining me, Zach. I totally appreciate it. We're going to put the link below. It is personal coaching with Zach um, on drtrishlee.com. So you can go over there and look for more information on Zach's personal coaching page. Um, and then on there, there's a link for a, is there, a, what is, is the link there for you to do a trial coaching session still? Remind me. No. Mm -mm, okay. Not, Cause not sometimes you offer it. So right now mm -hmm. that's not the offer. So mm -hmm. the offer is to get the, the free program. So when you go over there and you sign up, you will then get the free no porn November program. Mm -hmm. So yep. go to the page, check it out, get the information. And then, uh, as always control your brain or it'll control you. We'll see you next time. Thanks Zach. Bye everybody.